I am not able to record it either. Do you want me to keep going or? Just to, if everyone could just bear a moment, we need to record this meeting and we're just getting that going and we're get, we will be starting here in a minute or so. Appreciate your patience. As everyone knows, this is our first ever virtual Board of Education meeting. So there will be a few bumps. If you're looking for the owner, I thought I heard Virgil say the owner had to record. My calendar invite shows that Virgil's the owner. Okay. 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 I think we're going to go ahead and get started. So it is 5:32 p.m. and I now call to order the Grand Island Public Schools Board of Education meeting. This is the March 23rd, 2019 special meeting. Notice of this meeting has been advertised in the Grand Island Independent, which is the district's designated method of giving notice of these meetings. We want those in attendance to know that copies of the Open Meetings Act are available at the entrance to the boardroom. If anyone in attendance is interested in addressing our board, you are welcome to do so. We simply request that you complete the appropriate form and turn it into us now so that you may be recognized during the public forum part of our meeting. These forms are also located by the entry doors of the room. Dr. Dexter, will you please call the roll? Mrs. Albers. Mr. Barsonis. Present. Dr. Rose. Present. Mr. Brown. Present. Mrs. Inc. Present. Mrs. Gordemaker. Present. Mrs. Hinkle. Present. Mrs. Schutz. Here. And Mrs. Wong. Here. And just to let you know, I did receive a text message from Lisa Albers that she's having technical difficulties. So she is attempting to join, but is not with us yet. So, okay. Agenda item number three is the mission statement. I will go ahead and read that for us. Every student, every day, sorry, I gotta get this out of the way, a success. In educating students, we teach hearts as well as minds. Yes. Within the Grand Island Public Schools, every student will be taught to read, write, and communicate effectively, solve problems, acquire and apply knowledge, and demonstrate mastery through performance to the best of the student's abilities. Every student will be treated with fairness and dignity. Every student will be honored for their unique qualities and backgrounds. Every student will experience a sense of belonging, contribution, and success. And every student will develop responsibility and show respect for others as well as oneself. Uh, did someone have a question? So Lisa, we can hear you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Hello. Annie's here too. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm here. I was having technical difficulties. Okay. Thank you. Um, so number four is the public forum part of the meeting. And I do not see anyone here to address the, the board. So we will move on to action item number five, which is our only action item. And this is the state of emergency resolution. I'm going to make this a little smaller so I can share this with everybody. And I will read it and then when I get done I will need one of the board members to uh, make the motion to approve and then someone else to second it. Resolution of the Board of Education of Hall County School District 40-0002 also known as Grand Island Public School District regarding COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, global pandemic and epidemic sickness. Be it resolved that, whereas the COVID-19, also known as the coronavirus, global pandemic and epidemic sickness has already had a substantial disruptive effect on Nebraska and school districts. And whereas the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and epidemic sickness will likely continue to substantially disrupt Nebraska school districts, 
And whereas on March 13, 2020, President Trump declared a national emergency because of the COVID-19 epidemic, and whereas on March 13, 2020, Governor Ricketts declared a state of emergency because of the COVID-19 epidemic, and whereas the Hall County Board of Commissioners Chairperson has issued a declaration declaring a state of emergency in Hall County, County, Nebraska as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and epidemic sickness for a duration that is undermined. And whereas the city of Grand Island has issued a declaration declaring a state emergency May, someone uh, will need to mute. Can someone please mute? Okay. okay. Whereas the city of Grand Allen has issued a declaration declaring a state of emergency in the city of Grand Allen, Howe County, Nebraska, as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and epidemic sickness for a duration that is undermined. And whereas Hall County Emergency Management Director John Rosalind has issued a proclamation to Hall County School District 40-0002, also known as Grand Island Public School District, under the provisions of Nebraska Revised Statute 81-829.51, finding and determining that a state of emergency exists as a result of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and epidemic sickness for an undetermined period, and whereas the Nebraska Commissioner of Education and the Nebraska State Board of Education has the legal authority to waive, suspend, delay, alter, or otherwise forego implementing, enforcing, and interpreting certain statutory and regulatory requirements for school districts in Nebraska, and whereas the Grand Island Public School District will by law be required to provide educational services to the children residing or electing education in such school district for the balance of the 2019-2020 school year, and whereas pursuant to Nebraska Revised Statute 81-529.51 and other applicable laws before any expenditures, contract, or obligation is undertaken, it shall be approved by a vote of the governing body of such local government, here the Board of Education of the Grand Island Public School District. And now therefore, on the basis of the foregoing facts, the Board of Education of Hall County School District 40-0002, also known as Grand Island Public School District, should and does by here declare that effective on Friday, March 13th, 2020, a state of emergency exists due to the COVID-19 pandemic and epidemic sickness to continue in effect until the state and federal government determines that a state of emergency no longer exists due to the COVID-19 pandemic. And the Board of Education further should and does by here authorize the superintendent of schools or designee to, number one, make emergency expenditures, enter into contracts and incur obligations for emergency management purposes, regardless of existing statutory limitations and requirements pertaining to appropriation, budgeting, levies, or the manner of entering into contracts in excess of or in violation of existing statutory limitation or requirements. Two, make adjustments to the school calendar for the 2019-2020 school year to meet statutory requirements for hours of instruction in the elementary and secondary grades due to the loss of instructional days. And three, make adjustments to work schedules and related compensation and benefits for full-time and part-time certificated employees under the 187-day contract year and educational support personnel, both nine, 10, and 12-month employees due to the emergency condition engendered by the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and epidemic sickness, including but not limited to assignment that provide for non-exempt education support employees to be on call during all work regular hours and be paid hourly wages and benefit therefore, and determine and directs that non-exempt educational staff, clerical, staff, custodial staff, bus drivers, paraeducators, food services personnel, and the like that are paid on an hourly basis and lose work hours as a result of school closure or other disruption of the regular work schedule for such employees as a result of the COVID-19 pandemic and academic sickness shall be paid their full wages and benefits for their regularly scheduled work hours for such days such hours to be shown on each educational support staff member's time card as COVID-19 virus leave for a period not to exceed 14 work days. The above resolution having been read in this, in, oh, sorry, this is where I need the next board member to um, make the uh, motion that we approve this. 
Mr. Sanko, I move that the board, uh, I move for the passage and adoption of this resolution. And do I have a second? Second. And was that Mr. All right. Second, Mr. Barsonis. Is there any discussion from any of the Board of Education members? If not, I will ask Dr. Dexter to take a roll call vote. Mr. Zalbers? Yes. Mr. Barsonis? Yes. Dr. Rose? Yes. Mr. Brown? Yes. Mrs. Inc? Yes. Mrs. Gordemaker? Mrs. Hinkle? Yes. Mrs. Schutz? Yes. Ms. Wolf? Yes. Motion passed. All right, thank you. Now we will move on to number six, which is the information items. And Dr. Grover will go through uh, information for us. And I will share it while she goes through it. to assist both the district and building level administration with preparedness, prevention, and response and recovery. This plan is also aligned with our Central District Health Department as well as the Center for Disease Control. We have established a district pandemic response team. I would like to identify the members of our team steps for the plan uh, allows us to be able to identify the risk starting at a level one low risk all the way to a level four high risk and we have quickly moved through the risk levels of this plan it includes preparation communication reporting of illnesses sanitation and clean 
happening, continuation of our academic learning, school dismissal and closure, compensation of our staff, as well as the opening of the schools at the direction of the public health department. Our communication plan, as outlined, it continues to allow us to use less talk uh, as our main source of engagement with our community. We do commit to responding to all of our less talk tickets or patrons emails within 24 hours or less. We want consistent communication to help alleviate any confusion. All district communication will be approved by the communications department and staff are welcome to share our district communication. We continue to rely on our local media folks as they have been huge partners in helping us to push out this critical, critical messaging as it relates to the COVID-19 pandemic. We have a clearly outlined nutrition service plan to continue to provide meals for our students. Right now, we are in the delivery mode of the meals where our truck drivers uh, deliver meals to our satellite locations for meal distribution. Uh, we're currently using a curbside pickup system in order for our families to receive the meals. On site with our meal distribution, we do recognize the sanitation uh, processes that are needed and we commit to maintaining a safe environment as we continue to serve meals. <coughs> we are now operating in our continuation of academic learning action plan. Today was the first day of our e-learning. All of our students have the devices uh, and the materials that they need in order to carry out this alternative learning environment. Teachers are encouraged to collaborate virtual, with our students virtually uh, using Zoom or Hangout Meets. During this time, it's important to acknowledge that the students' grades are frozen until further notice. However, we do want to notify our parents that if students need to improve their current grades, that they should reach out to their teachers to develop an alternative learning plan to allow them to improve their grades during this time. All of the roles and responsibilities from the leading for learning department, from the technology department, the principals, the teachers, special education, um, as well as our special support services such as ELL and gifted are also outlined in the plan. We also have special guidelines for our counselors and our social workers to continue to support the mental health needs of our students as well. The students' roles and responsibilities are outlined. We do encourage our students to reach out to their teacher uh, in regards to any questions about course assignment, technologies to be used, or if they're having trouble with their technology, as well as a personal academic or social emotional concern. We further outline the roles and responsibilities for the parents as well. Sanitation and cleaning is a huge part of this COVID-19 pandemic plan. And we, although we are in the midst of our school closure, uh, as we know it, our physical space, we continue to roll out the sanitation procedures as outlined in the document. Compensation of our staff uh, through the resolutions that have been approved by the board, uh, we are able to continue payroll processing as normal. Uh, it is critical uh, that we maintain all of our payroll functions and we have provided all of the equipment necessary to continue this process. We will continue to take care of accounts receivable and any other business operations through our remote processes. We are in the midst of our school closure and of our physical space um, until further notice. And at that time, we will be able to discuss and roll out any reopening um, as we go through uh, those processes. At this particular time, we do not have a return date. I just want to reinforce that we are closed uh, as we know it to date. Expectations for all staff, all staff members um, have a copy of this plan. Uh, they are vital to the implementation of the plan. Their roles and responsibilities uh, may be very fluid and may be asked to perform different duties in order to help us to continue to support our students. Uh, the Board of Education, their role is also outlined in this plan to stay informed, to continue
continue to work with our local, regional, state, and federal uh, guidance, as well as emergency declarations, as demonstrated tonight, and continue to support consistent communication with our constituents. In summary, uh, we recognize that the pandemics are unpredictable, but recurring events that can have severe consequences on human health and economic well-being worldwide. Throughout this process, the Grand Island Public Schools Pandemic Plan is designed to be a working document to address preventive measures as well as implementation protocols to support our students and carry out our mission of every student every day a success. Through this pandemic plan, it has empowered us to be able to speak up for our students because they are the ones that are missing out on academic and athletic championships, school plays, band concerts, and so much more. In the midst of communicating the logistics of things, we want to make sure that we forever remember our compassion and empathy for those students that we serve. We remain purposeful. Crisis requires us to make a vision decisions. We want to make sure that we are collaborating and understanding the impact to our students while continuing to put our students first, calming their fears, and providing solutions for our families, which we have demonstrated through this crisis. We certainly want to be community-minded and collaborate with our community to ensure safety and to maximize our resources to help support the community at large. We must keep our community armed with updated and accurate information related to Grand Island Public Schools to prevent any misunderstandings and to collectively have a, the most positive impact we can for our students. Dr. Grover. Thank you very much, Dr. Grover. And um, on behalf of the Board of Education, we would just like to once again. When you've been on mute at this time. Oh, yep, that's right. <laughs> thank you for reminding me. Um, Dr. Grover, thank you so much uh, for your leadership through this time and to everyone else that's on the pandemic planning team, to all the staff, teachers, especially who are now providing. Uh, educational services to our students online, which is a new experience. Uh, as the Board of Education, I know, is incredibly proud of all of you and very, very grateful to all of you for the countless hours you put into making this happen. Um, just not enough words of thanks and praise that we can share with you. Do any of the Board of Education members have questions for Dr. Grover or any comments that you want to share with Dr. Grover? Okay. All right, so then we will move to agenda item number seven, which is the notification of upcoming board meetings. Our next board meeting will be April 10th at 5.30 p.m. It is possible we will have to once again use this um, method for the meeting. Um, it will just depend upon how things evolve before that time. And I appreciate everyone's efforts uh, to be here tonight, and we are adjourned for our first ever online meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.